Okay, so now I'm going to answer questions from P1, January 2019, the new international A-level paper. It's not the P1 from the UK, it's the international A-level P1 paper. Uh, the first ever exam for this um, new syllabus was in January 2019, and I'm going to answer some questions from this paper. Okay, the first question is about integration. And it's a pretty straightforward one. So we're supposed to integrate this um, expression here. So you have the integral sign, which is an elongated s. You've got 2 over 3x cubed. That's fine. There's no modifications needed for this for us to be able to integrate it. However, 1 over 2x cubed, okay, we should always write the, the x term um, as a numerator. Okay, so you're going to have minus 1 over 2, and we x to the power of minus 3. And then you've got your plus 5, which remains as it is. And we've got to integrate that with respect to x. Don't forget to put this in brackets and put the dx at the end. Okay, now just a quick point because it's a common mistake for people to do this. They'll say this, and they'll say that this is equal to 2x to the power of minus 3. And that's wrong. That's not right because it's only the x, okay, which is going to be moving up. And it's only the x that has, okay, the, the power of minus 3. So this is, the, the power of minus 3 is only with the x, okay? So the power of 3. So when you write this as a numerator, the x goes to the top, so it becomes x to the power of minus 3, and the 2 remains where it is, okay? That 3 power has nothing to do with the 2, okay? If it was 1 over 2x cubed like this, then you could write this as 2x, but in brackets, all minus, to the power of minus 3. Okay, so that's a small point. Many people will make the mistake of writing this as 2, x to the power of minus 3 when it's a half x to the power of minus 3. Now we're ready to integrate. Now when we integrate, okay, what we must do is we must add 1 to the power. So this becomes 2 over 3, x to the power of 4, and then you divide by the new power. Okay, so you're going to have to divide by this 4. And then you've got minus a half, let me write this a bit neater, you've got minus a half, and we've got x to the power of minus 2. Add 1 to minus 3, get minus 2. Divided by minus 2. Okay, so that's like multiplied there. And plus, and you're going to have, if you have a constant, you just add an x to the to end of it. Okay, plus 5x. And then plus the constant of integration. Because remember, integration is the reverse of differentiation. If I was to differentiate something to get that, there could have been a constant there that disappeared. Okay, so I have to write the plus c. Okay, when you don't have a, when you have a, a what's called an indefinite integral and there's no limits here. So now we can simplify that two and that four cancel. So you're left with one over six x to the power of four. And you're gonna have minus and a minus is plus. You're gonna have um, x to the power of minus two divided by four, and you're gonna have plus five x, you're gonna have plus c. Okay, you can leave your answer like that, that's perfectly fine, or you could write it as x to the power of 4 over 6 plus 1 over 4 x to the power of 2 and plus 5x and don't forget your plus c. Okay, so this is fine and this is fine. Either of those are fine. You don't have to write this as a positive power. If you do, that's kind of, you say, more simplified. But it's perfectly fine for our uh, syllabus to leave your answer in either of these two forms. And that's question number one finished.